How y'all doing? How y'all doing? This is Alvin with Trying Success here on the Old Fashioned Health Network. Good health inside and out. And today's guest, y'all, is none other than Mr. Then Coach, I'm gonna call you Coach Clint. All right, that's cool. cool Coach man. Clint. So he he's gonna be my um. So I'm gonna let you tell them a little bit about yourself because I was gonna go down the whole list, but I'm gonna let you tell the people who you are, what you do, and a little bit about yourself. All right, my name is Clinton Kent. Um, coach football. Um, retired professional football player. Played in the Canadian Football League. You said retired. Yeah, retired. So I'm not old though. Not old. Trying, that's what I'm saying. Trying to stay young, you know. So okay. Um, played five years in Canada, um, played a year in Europe. Okay. And I played a year in arena ball. So now, you know, I train a ton of athletes, been doing that about six, seven years now since I retired. Okay. Um, I do a lot of speed and agility, a lot of skill training for football players. So, and like I said, I got NFL guys, college guys. I got kids that's five years old, seven years old. So I do it all. So, um, but yeah, man, that's that's pretty much what I do, and, and then I have my own brand. You can see right here. It's called um, UW. I call it UWE United We Exercise, okay. and just trying to promote health. And you know, I kind of came about the brand because my only blood brother mm -hmm. died at the age of twenty six from a heart attack. Wow. Okay. And then my mom ended up dying at um fifty two from a heart attack. So that's okay. kind of that's kind of how I came up with the brand and. You know, fitness has always been very important to me from playing sports. And okay. So that's kind of where I came up with it. So I just try to motivate a lot of people, okay. you know what I'm saying, all over the country and Canada and all over the world. So, yeah, that's my main goal, man. And it's pretty big, especially on Facebook. I got a Facebook page, and it's a lot of people, you know, posting their workouts and where they're eating. Yeah. So it's a, yeah. it's a pretty cool thing, man. So, um Wow. Uh, you kind of threw me off with the first part of that because I wasn't ready for that part. Um, so so let me ask you, um, with the whole personal training thing about getting more involved in it because of your, your, your mother and, and your brother. So is this like the, uh, is that is that like a um, something that runs the genetics in the family with the heart situation or, or what is? And make sure they can hear you in your mic because I want them to hear this because it's sound. Um. I don't think it's genetics. Okay. Um, before I went to college, I had to wear like a heart monitor when my brother died. He okay. died when I was in like eighth grade. So okay. Um, when he died, I had to wear a, a heart monitor for like a week before I went to play college football, and everything was fine. And okay. You know, with my mom, it was kind of it's kind of crazy, man. She went in for a gallbladder surgery to get a gallbladder removed, and. You know, being a dude, man, it's just like, she's like, come on over here, boy, give me a kiss. Right, you know right. how we is. <laughs> we like oh, Sean Phillips, yeah. Right, right. And, you know, little that I know, I should have, you know what I'm saying? So I left the hospital, you know, went to go get some food, and then that's when I got a call. She had went into, you know. Cardiac arrest. Yep. So, yeah, man, it's crazy. Wow, wow. Okay, wow, that's, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's a. Uh, it kind of reminds me, of, like Patty LaBelle always said, you know, make sure you say what you're gonna say to your loved ones now because you don't ever know when it's gonna. You, you may not get that chance again. You know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Wow. Okay, so you played sports in the Canadian League. Uh, how was that? What was, um, tell me, tell me the good, and then the uh, not so good. Oh uh, man, it was awesome, man. I tell people, um, Canada is a great country. You know, the people are so friendly. Okay. Um, it's so clean, um, great food, and it's all different types of culture. Okay. You can see people might be Ethiopian, might be from Egypt. They, okay. You don't know what they are over right, there. Right. It's a melting so, pot of people. Yeah, so it's, it's the culture-wise, it's, it's crazy. So mm. I went to Canada fresh out of college. I okay. didn't wait around for the NFL, so okay. I got a contract offered to me while I was still in college. Where'd you go to school? I went to James Madison okay. University okay. Uh, up in Harrisonburg, Virginia. So, okay. Um, we actually just moved up to the Sun Belt. So we went from FCS okay. to F FBS now. So okay. that's kind of like the big the big boy football. So okay. went there and then fresh out of college, I went to Montreal. And that was wow. an experience. Okay. You know, it's mainly all French. Um, Did you learn some French? I didn't learn any French. <laughs> You are gonna go over there and stay over there five years? I don't know no French man. Well, I was only there for a year, year and a half. Okay. So 
Mercy Buku. That's all. Okay. <laughs> and what does it say? What does that mean? Uh, thanks a lot. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So went there. Um, kind of got a little crazy story, man. So I went there. Coming into my second year, I got injured. Okay. Pulled my hamstring. Okay. They released me. Okay. I ended up sitting out. I set out of football for like two years. Mm-hmm. And I came back, tore my ACL, set out another year. So I was out of football three years, man. So, and, you know, that's a lot of people don't know this about my story. Everybody think I was just always on the rise, but right. I was at a low point and then had to go back up to the rise, you know what I'm saying, to the sky. So the biggest thing about that is, you know, I had a support system from my dad, mm-hmm. you know, that was able to support me financially okay. as, you know, I was substitute teaching. Working out every day, not knowing why I'm working out, man. So, and um, one of my best friends from college, he called me out of the blue, and he had a private workout with a scout from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Okay. And he was a quarterback. He actually coached for the uh, Minnesota Vikings now. So, okay. All right. Actually, when you just called me, I was just on the phone with him. So when Tell I me what you're going to do this interview. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so I drove up. It was up in Louisville, Kentucky. Um. I drove out there the next morning, worked out the following day. He ended up offering me a contract, then he offered my my guy a contract. So just blessed, man. Yeah, blessed. So that's kinda how, you know, I got back on and mm-hmm. I ended up playing, you know what I'm saying, you know, three to four more years in Canada. So Okay. But Canada is that's I love I, I love the people there, man. And but it seemed like such a beautiful place too, man. It is, it is. And um Is it is it as clean as it seemed to be? Yeah, it's, it's very clean. It's kind of crazy because you got the you got Quebec, which is like Montreal area. Right, 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 right. They're more like European feel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I said, they speak French. Right. Then you can go to Toronto, you know, out east. Right. That's more like the U.S. feel. You know, you go to the clubs. They're going right. to be playing the rap, the hip-hop, mm-hmm. so that, that type of stuff. Right. And, you know, you're going to see more blacks, you know, there. So okay. then when you go out west, you know, to Vancouver, mm. now nah, that's a beautiful place. Oh man, so much money out there. So you didn't think about just, just think, I mean, just like set it to call it home. I thought about it. Mm-hmm. You know, at the time, you know, I had a girlfriend at the time. She was Canadian. We ended up getting married, went through a divorce or whatever. So what happened was when I stopped playing, I ended up working in the oil field for like a year. Okay. So I was pipelining, working in the oil field, and my work visa expired. Okay. So once your work visa expired, they contacted me. It was like, Clint, you got to be out of the country. If not, we coming looking for you. Really? Yes. So Canada don't play. They don't play, man. So, so, so how long was how long was it expired before you got the phone call? Like a couple days? A week? I can't. I can't remember exactly. But they didn't let you stay more than thirty days. Be like, nah. Wow. So I, long story short, I left before my work visa expired, and okay. I, that's when I moved back to Macon. Okay. You know, me and my dad have a house there, so I moved him back into the house there. So okay. Okay. And then at the time, you know, my fiance at the time, she moved to Macon, okay. from Canada, and then that's okay. All right. So with coaching uh, the younger kids versus coaching the NFL players, what is it? Is it? Is it? To me, I would think if I'm coaching, if, I, if it seemed like to me, an NFL player would be a little harder to teach than a kid. The reason why is. A kid is not, not not afraid to try anything. It's kind of like when you teach a kid to swim versus an adult. You push me in the water, I'm going to be like about to probably lose my mind. But a kid be like, get in there and start doing it. Is it the same way when it comes to training? Uh, it's kind of – I kind of sound contradictory when I say this. Okay. It's, it's easier to train the NFL guys, mm-hmm. and it's also easier to train the younger kids. And I'm about to explain that. Okay. It's easy to train the NFL guys because they pretty much they pro they high profile athletes mm-hmm. they pretty much already right. in tune with everything you know okay. what I'm saying right, so right, right. it's this little minor stuff that you can tweak they mm-hmm. already got the game okay they already they already got the sauce okay okay you know what I'm saying right 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 now with the younger kids it's easier to teach them but you got to have more patience the reason it's easy to, to teach them because they hungry no not that you don't have to break bad habits. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, 
First when I get an NFL guy, they can pick it up. They process things, you know, they process, you know, information faster mm -hmm. versus uh, if I get somebody like high school and, they, and they've been doing the same thing for the last five years, now you're trying to break that habit. That's why it's easier to get the younger kids. Okay. And they don't know what, it, what they're doing, why they're wrong. So what I'm teaching them is going to be the right thing. They're going to start doing from day one. Got you. Okay. So that's why I say it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, it's kind, it's kind of con contradictory. You know what I'm saying? So. I guess it just depends, but it makes sense though. And that makes sense because if, if 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 you got NFL players doing it a certain way always, and then you're trying to teach them to break that habit, it's a yeah. little. I, I get it. Yeah, but um, you got to have more patience. Like okay. NFL guys, when I train them, the session it goes. Okay. You know, when I get younger kids, you know, middle school, high, even mm -hmm. high school kids, you know, the session tends tends to slow down. Okay. Because I'm doing more teaching. So okay. I got to teach because I like to explain everything. Okay. <laughs> so right. every drill we do, everything we do, I'm explaining it to you why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm explaining it to you how, how, you know, it carries over to the game. Okay. So let me ask you this question. Um, as a coach and a trainer, um, especially when you're talking about teaching kids, is it, is it, isn't there a way to teach kids how, how, when I say not to get hurt, but how to prove, prevent a uh, a bad injury you, can, you can't prevent it you know i don't saw a lot of injuries where people are just running mm -hmm. and they just stick their foot in the ground and they just go down non-contact okay so you really can't prevent it okay and you have certain football players they play a certain way mm -hmm. like one of my good friends kareem jackson mm -hmm. you know he's that's when i was telling him about the he's sponsored by the water but um uh, the way he plays the game is very violent. So when he comes down here, he's trying to knock hell at you. <laughs> okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? Right, so, right, right. Versus when I played, I try not I would try to knock hell at you, but huh. it, it gotta be the right time. You know what I'm saying? I okay. ain't trying to do that all the time. So so it can be be prevented in okay. that way. Okay. And you have some running backs, you know, they don't run out of bounds. They they love to take hits. Like Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, like people like him. You know, they want contact. They want to yes. bring you over every time instead of trying to make you miss. So, okay, but it re it really can't it, it it can't be prevented. You know, wow. so okay, all right. So that's good to know. Y'all know that. Okay, so so let me ask you this: um, if you if you're in high school student thinking about I want to play football, they in the ninth grade, what would you tell them they need to start thinking about doing? So. A scout or somebody would look at them. What are, what are the basic things they need to start trying to do at ninth grade? In the ninth grade, the main thing is it starts with the mindset. Okay. You know, you got to train. Once you train the mind, mm -hmm. if I sign up for this, for football, mm -hmm. you got to be all in. Because you got okay. kids that's been playing since five years old. So if you're in the ninth grade, 14 mm -hmm. years old, you behind. Okay. You know, so okay. I would say train your mindset. And okay. And Work your tail off. Like, in my mind, when I train, I'm like, ain't nobody in this world outworking me. You know, so okay. I would go train. Like, them times I was telling you when I was them three years, mm -hmm. I would go train 6 in the morning, midday. And then my, my, one of my good friends, Kareem Jackson, mm -hmm. we might call each other at 12, 1 o'clock a.m., go to the gym. So I was training two or three times a day. So it's just about training your mindset. So... And obviously, with them being so behind, it's going to take a lot of, I would say, personal training. Mm -hmm. When I say personal training, I mean, like, skill skill training. Okay. So, if they're a receiver, they need to get rid of receiver guys so you can really learn, you know, the small details about getting in and out of breaks and how to catch the football. It's all science. Okay. That's what sports is, all science. So Okay. So, so with that being said, if it's all science uh, – I want to make sure I get his name right. Play, uh, he's he's. Oh God, I want to remember this guy's name. Uh, play, Seattle Seahawks receiver. Uh, Metcalf. Mm mm. He's older. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he's really really smart. I went to Harvard or Yale, one of the schools like that. But he's really 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 smart. I can't yeah. think of his name I right can't. now. But so, how much does your uh, does your um, not necessarily your IQ, but but how much does the the ability to be able to to I guess to be smart I and mean, be smart is not the right smart, word. Smart that goes a long ways. 
you know. Um, now that doesn't mean I'm not talking about. So those other listen, I'm not talking about that. You have to know English or all the time or like that. But so I'm talking, you're talking about, about football IQ. I'm talking about football IQ. What's football um, IQ? That's a good question. What is football IQ? Football IQ is knowing where are you supposed to be, where are you taking away, what are you giving up, where's your help. Like just knowing the integrity of the defense. Okay. If I'm supposed to be here, why am I supposed to be here? Where are my eyes supposed to be at? You know. Oh. So I do this thing called Asker. You know, the first thing with all defensive player, I call it Asker. It's mm-hmm. A S K I R. So basically, the A is that's number one. You got to know that's alignment. You got to know how to align. Okay. All right. Okay. S is stance. I got to know what what are my feet? Are my feet square? Are okay. they staggered? That's okay. S. All okay. right. The K is key. Okay. Key is where when the ball is high, where are my eyes at? What am I reading? Okay. Am I reading the running back, the slot receiver, the number one receiver, the number two? So that's key. Okay. And then the eyes, um, basically, you know, where do my feet doing when the ball is high? Am I popping? Am I backpedaling? Am I shuffling? All right. So okay. I call that, you know, the um, initial reaction. All okay. right. And the R is obviously a responsibility. Okay. What is my job? So that's kind of what I go off. So when I show with, with these kids next week for the first time, mm-hmm. you know, I just took a um, a new a new job to be the de- defense coordinator at Mary okay. Persons. That's what I'm gonna tell them. I'm gonna get on them five letters. I'm gonna say we got to know this before every snap. Okay. So, so you know, um, you know, the Falcons can need some help. We we really need some help. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, um, they they definitely. I I think they did right by drafting a receiver because they don't have no receivers right now. So. So you think I, they made it? Yeah, think they did good. Yeah, I wish they would have took took my boy Jameson, man. He's to me. Winston? Very, nah, Williams. The okay, guy, okay, okay. The receiver from uh, Alabama. Okay, okay. To me, he was the best receiver in the draft by far. And but you know that's the Falcons you know, for you. <sighs> okay, I'm not gonna talk about them all because they be making <laughs> me mad sometimes. You know, I'm so tired of defending the Falcons. I don't know what to do, man. I'm so tired of defending the Falcons. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about. Jackson State University coach Deion Sanders. What do you think about the way Coach Sanders is doing at Jackson State? You know how to talk about Jackson State. That's my school. Tell yeah, what you think. Um, I just I love what Deion doing, man. I kind of I don't say I compare myself to him, but we kind of do a lot of things similar because in the coaching world, everybody had this. You know, you got to do it this type of way. Mm-hmm. Everybody do it this way. Nobody don't want to do it this way. So right. what I'm getting at is I'm more of a social media guy. You know, I post videos, mm-hmm. workouts. I'm right. talking. I, what, I post my life on there. Most coaches, they don't they don't post their life. You know? mm-hmm. So Dion might go live during practice. Yep. Like, that's, and, and give you a quote. And that's what I like. And he's bringing in rappers. He's bringing in strippers. He's bringing in. Yeah. The, the he bringing in the world. Yeah, he's he bringing bring the, the world to yeah. come talk to the team. Like, ain't nobody else doing that. So that's where – and the thing about I tell people about dealing with these kids, well, mm-hmm. dealing with anybody, I don't uh-huh. care if you're married, girlfriend, boyfriend, dealing with kids, uh-huh. training. The number one thing is relationship. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. got to be able to develop a relationship with them. And once they know you, you care, they'll do whatever for you. So I, I like that. And I think it's important what you said about the way he's doing and bringing in the world because after 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 you leave the university, you got the world to deal with. Yeah, man. And pretty much everywhere I've been, well, I mean, this about to be my eighth year coaching. Mm-hmm. You know, I build relationships. Kids can relate to me. Yeah. Well, like I, when I coached college for three years, a lot of kids thought I was 25, 26. You know, I'll be 39 this year. You know wow. what I'm saying? So it's like, Coach, I ain't know you that old, but it's just about being able to relate. Mm-hmm. You got to be able to adjust. You know, and that's a good thing about football, you know, about sports. You deal with so many different walks of life. Mm-hmm. So you might have Johnny over here that's a like, filthy rich, and then you right. might have Bud over here that's ain't got a pot to piss in. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. and this guy might be Asian, you know. Mm. This guy might be Mexican, you know. This guy, obviously, you know, white, black. So it's just, you're just dealing with so many different, you know, walks of life. That's why I feel like football is the best team sport. There is in the world. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. All right. So uh, this is the final question I asked you about. Um, well, two. Uh, when it comes to the 
guys that's going into the NFL right now, they're just getting ready to go into the NFL, what would you tell them when it comes to how to manage their success, especially when it comes to money? What would you tell them? Well, I'll start with the success. The big thing is, you know, be humble. Okay. Ain't no one man bigger than the world, bigger than the organization. Call God would definitely sit. We're right, yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll, put, he'll put you back in your He'll make you humble. Okay. So I'm all about my two biggest things. Just be humble and treat people right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's just being a great person. You okay. know what I'm saying? So as far as money-wise, that's where the financial advisors and stuff going to have to come in and to play. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I know a lot of people. Don't don't like to get financial advisors, but they're there for a reason mm-hmm. to help you manage your money, you know. So, and the older I get, you know, I wasted, I blew a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, like, but the older I'm getting, I did have a dad that's big into investing. So, fresh out of college, after my first year, you know, he made me invest money into stocks and bonds. Okay. So that's something I did. I didn't want to do it. I'm mad. I'm doing it at the time. I'm 22 years old. You right, know what right, I mean? But right. I'm glad I did it. So that would be the the biggest thing, man. I would tell them invest money, and obviously, you know, they're gonna go out and get the house and the cars and the jewelry and for the and, first couple of years. Yeah. So I mean, you they blow so much money. It's it's crazy, man. And the biggest thing they you have as a professional athlete, mm-hmm. you live this lifestyle thinking that. It's going to continue. It's going to continue. Mm-hmm. So you live this lifestyle, end of the season, boom, you cut, and then don't nobody pick you up. Now you don't have any more paychecks coming in. So that's the <laughs> – And money going out and nothing coming in, you be yeah. done. Yep. So wow. – And I, you know, I don't been around, you know, my friend tell me stories, you know, NFL guys, they'll blow all their money, mm-hmm. but they know – Another check coming. They know another check coming for the following cent. They're assuming, mm-hmm. but it don't. And then now you you rock bottom. You know what I'm saying? So, wow, coach, I appreciate you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is the last question. Yeah. <laughs> now you do personal training. Now, if you personal train people the way you talking about the way you coach, they're not afraid of you personal training them all. I mean, like you going to train somebody. I mean, it seems like it's you like laser focus. Like ain't gonna be no breaks. Now nah, I'm big on, you know, when I train, you know, I got a, I got quite a few, you know, clients I train. Um, when people look at me, they think I lift a lot of weights. They be scared of me, especially like women. I'm like, right. and even some dudes, I'm like, I do not lift heavy weight. You told me that. Repetition. You know, I'm all about high reps, low weights. I'm not yeah. trying to be big anymore. I'm about to be 40 years old. I'm trying to be lean, more right, flexible. Right. So. Right. But now nah, my workouts, I'm I'm big on hit. Okay. You know, you know the high, you know high high intensity training. So right. it's circuit based, and we gonna we gonna get after it. So we go from station to station, and I'm gonna push you, push you to the max. Okay. So I'm asking for myself, y'all. This is my coach. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> but anyway, so tell the people how to um, stay in contact with you or your social media, or if they want to. Hire you to train them or something? How, how do they get in contact? And yo, yo, um, he didn't bring me no shirt. Um, because I, I had seen one yet. Maybe it's in the studio. I don't know. But anyway, tell the people how to reach out to you. Um, yeah. Um, so my training, you know, um, you. I was about to say UW. My training Instagram is uh United We Exercise. Um, for for the kids, athletes, um, is CK. This Instagram is CKFB Academy. Okay. All one word. And my personal one is Coach Kent 41. So if you kind of okay. want to see my personal life, go to Coach, Coach Kent 41. So okay. um, I do have a website, um, basically, uh, unitedweexercise.com. Okay. So That's on the shirt. Yeah, unitedexercise.com. I got women's apparel, leggings, sports bras. Um, I saw. I, w- I was on your website. I saw so your. So you can learn more about the company. Um, it's pretty big, you know, especially here in the southeast um, and Canada. Canada, you know, they. That's why I say I love Canada. They I, I support. So they support you, huh? They support. So that's good. But yeah, that's pretty much. I'm working on the CKLB Academy um, website, and it should be here ready by the next couple of weeks. So okay. So it's all. It's all coming along. So. 
Man, I really, really, really thank you for coming on the show. I I know you're coming back again, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. All right. Thank you all so much for watching Trying Success here on the Old Fashioned Health Network. Good health inside and out. We out.